I'm Kelsey from roughandtumblefarmhouse.com and today we're going to be comparing the Graco Pack and Play with the Baby Bjorn Mini Sleeper. Now if you are brand new to my channel, I share about farming, family food, and fortitude. So a lot of my content is about kind of recipes from scratch or small farm life, homesteading, crafty sort of things, those sort of topics. And so this is definitely more in the family section. We have had a Graco pack and play for our first daughter and then we were gifted a baby Bjorn mini crib just a few months ago and so we've had a chance to use both and I know especially if you are a new mom or you're looking at investing in a mini crib that there are a lot of options out there and so I thought I'd just kind of take you through the two pros and cons and show you what they look like. So here let's look first at the size because I mean you are wanting to pack these things up and carry them around. The baby Bjorn is pretty thin, pretty light. It's only 13 pounds. It is of course a little bit wider. It's more of a kind of square configuration versus the pack and play which is much heavier. It is uh, about 21 pounds and it's kind of a boxier construction. It does also have a carrying case but of course we have misplaced it. So that's how the two look and I'll show you now here the pack and play how you set it up. So we have a crib sheet that we got for it, our mini crib sheet. It does not come with any sort of crib sheet at all. The Baby Bjorn can come with a crib sheet, but it makes it more expensive. So to set this thing up, it can be a little confusing at first. <laughs> you just take the sides and snap the sides into their locked positions first, and you have to do this first, otherwise the next step won't work. So once the sides are locked into position, then you press the center down all the way until that locks into place. So really setup is pretty quick. There you have it. The pad does not come with a sheet. You'll have to put that on yourself. And also the pad cannot be changed. You can probably see there's little permanent drool spots on our pad here. And so it's a bummer that that doesn't zip off and can't be washed. So the whole thing just sets in the bottom like that and it is good to go. Now it also comes with this part here. This is to add a top layer or a top level to it. It's got kind of these little tent poles in the middle that just connect together and then you just connect each of the sides with these little kind of plastic clips. And this is gonna allow you to have a raised platform for baby. Now this we found was very nice when we were transitioning from a bassinet into a mini crib because the baby was able to be elevated but still safe. She wasn't so high that she could roll over the sides or anything like that. But it made it much easier when you were trying to take a, you know, like I said, a sleeping baby and put them into their crib without waking them up. It worked really well. So here's how that looks, just a little higher level. And then it also has this additional little piece where it's kind of a, a little stationary mobile that extends and you can snap that into place. And then it has little Velcro tags here where you can go ahead and hang. Uh, you will come with different little attachments depending on the style you get. Now, if you look, the other thing is with the pack and play is there are a lot of additional options you can get that are pretty affordable. Like here, this has a bassinet and a changing area on it. This one here just has the changing area and then the sleeper. So big differences there between that and the baby Bjorn, which we are getting into now. So the baby Bjorn, again, is a little bit on the thinner side. It is definitely more expensive. The baby Bjorn, you see here we have it with the sheet and with the sheet it costs $319 on Amazon. Without the sheet it is $261 versus the pack and play like I showed you before. The standard model is $72 and those fancier models that we looked at on Amazon are $179. Nice thing about the Baby Bjorn is this is how easy it is to put together. You literally unfold it, snap the legs out into place, and it's pretty much done. It takes just a couple of seconds. And then at two has the sleeping pad that you kind of tuck in there and just set it on the bottom. So really easy assembly so far, but then it has a putsy part where to affix the sleeping pad securely, you have to flip it upside down and dig into these corners here. There's straps attached to the bottom of the mattress pad 
that you then pull out here and hook onto these little red buckles. Now, again, it's not a huge pain, but it is a little bit putsy trying to pull those things out, especially if you are using a sheet in there, then the elastic of the sheet is covering the straps. And so trying to fit the straps out from underneath the sheet and over it and then around through the little hole and getting them clipped without them slipping back in can definitely be a little bit of a pain, but it's not too bad overall. One really nice thing about the Baby Bjorn, you can see it zips all the way across the top. The entire thing can come off the frame and be washed. You can't do that with the pack and play. Here I'm comparing just the size of the pack and play and the Baby Bjorn mattresses. You can see the Baby Bjorn's a little bit longer and a little bit thinner versus the pack and play's a little bit shorter. And here you can see just kind of the overall footprint of the two. So the bottoms are about the same, but the Baby Bjorn tapers a lot at the top. So there's a big difference there. And additionally, you also can see through the screen on the pack and play, but you can't necessarily see through it on the Baby Bjorn, which maybe it's just because of the styles that we had, but our baby monitor could not see through the Baby Bjorn, but could see through the pack and play. So when it comes right down to it, which is best, the Graco pack and play or the Baby Bjorn mini crib? And I'm gonna say it depends. now. The price tag on the Baby Bjorn Mini Crib is definitely gonna be a lot higher than it's gonna be on the pack and play. But if you are looking for a very lightweight, easy to use mini crib, just a mini crib, I think the Baby Bjorn is a really good option, especially if you are gonna be using it for a lot of traveling. It's pretty compact, it's about half the weight of the pack and play, and it's easy to assemble and works great as a crib. And the Baby Bjorn too is perfectly safe for even little ones, so if you're going from a bassinet to a mini crib, you don't necessarily have to have this top level here like this one does, but it is nice to have when you've got just a little peanut if you don't want them all the way down there. It's a little bit easier going from you to putting them in bed and hoping they stay asleep sort of a thing. I like having that extra height, but you absolutely can use this for even your small little ones that are just you know six months old, however old when you move them from their bassinet into their mini crib. If you are looking for something that is going to have multiple functions and multiple options, then I would say the pack and play is maybe a better option. If you're just kind of toting it around the house to different places, or like I said, if you are wanting to have that little bit of extra height for your little babes, or if you even want to get the additional things in here like I showed you, so you can add in that bassinet, you can have a changing station, all these things. So this is kind of more of a Swiss Army knife situation that's also mini crib versus this is just a straight up mini crib. So look at what you need for your family, kind of look at what your budget is and hopefully that'll help you make a decision. Thank you so much for watching. Please go ahead and comment below if you have any other mini cribs that you recommend or anything you've noticed about your Baby Bjorn or your pack and play. It's just more helpful for other moms and dads out there who are looking to compare the two. You can always find two new posts over on the blog and a new video here every single week about farming, family food, and fortitude here at our Rough and Tumble Farmhouse.